So how do you make a vaccine? So we know we have to get antigens into your body somehow. So here's our infamous, you've seen this picture probably for everywhere on the news and everyone is familiar with this picture, right? We all know what this is, right? So how do you make a vaccine against this? Well, let's talk about how you make a vaccine, period. And the thing, an interesting thing is like, okay, so one of the first vaccine, one of the biggest success stories in vaccines was the polio vaccine and poliomyelitis. So the thing is that if you were here last semester or if, you took in, take, if you've taken and fill one for one, you remember that muscle, skeletal muscle is innervated by neurons. But what happens if something, and remember that neurons are surrounded by, or not all neurons, but again, many of the neurons, their axons are surrounded by myelin, right? So what if you have a virus, this polio virus, that attacks neurons that innervate your muscles? Well, what we have here, these poor children, what happens is that this polio virus attacked that motor neuron and denervated their neurons, their muscle. So that motor neuron is totally gone. And whenever you lose, if you have a, like a damage to motor neurons that control a muscle, what happens to the muscle that was being controlled by that neuron? It atrophies. So you notice that these are these poor children, they have very skinny limbs because they, they've lost their motor nerves in the muscles of their legs in this one. Yeah, so this poor child, and yeah, that's why people who have survived polio and unfortunately had this polio, poliomyelitis, this is why they have the deformations and difficulty getting around. Because again, all of that muscle, they've lost control of the muscle and muscle tone due to that denervation. Now, this is like, okay, so polio, and you probably, you might have heard iron lung if you're a fan of medical history or history. And this is the last man in the United States who's using an iron lung. So what happens if polio attacks that nerve that innervates your diaphragm? Well, you're going to have trouble during breathing, right? Remember that diaphragm in your external intercostals, they're important for quiet breathing. So what happens is if, if your diaphragm is denervated, well, how are you going to use those muscles when you breathe? So this is why they kind of, uh, fed, so it used to be when polio was ravaging the world, this is why you saw a lot more of these iron lungs in history. So what they do is change the volume and pressure inside this chamber. And by changing that pressure, that expands and compresses their lungs. So these people needed the assistance of machinery to breathe because their diaphragm lost control, that word was denervated. And this is one of the heroes in science and medicine. So this is Jonas Salk. And what he did is involve, he invented the first vaccine for polio. So all the way back in 1954. Yeah, so the interesting thing is that he wanted to, he was so, believed so much in his vaccine and combating against this awful disease is that he never patented it. He never earned any money from his discovery. He just wanted to distribu distribute it so that as many people could be protected from polio as possible. And again, this is why you probably haven't heard of polio if you've grown up in a Western country. Maybe, but again, those children who are in impoverished countries, well, they didn't really have like the access to this vaccine. And this is why it tends to, it's still around, but it's not really affecting countries that have that the polio, some sort of polio vaccine to protect and prevent against this disease. Now, how did he make this vaccine? What he did is take the virus, and this is the polio virus, and then he treated it with formaldehyde. So formaldehyde changes the chemical structures of many things, and if you put it into a virus, the interesting thing is that it starts rearranging the bonds and forms, well, this is kind of like technical for chemistry, but it forms cross-links between molecules. So the thing is that kind of gums up the proteins and, R and the yeah, the nucleic acids in a polio virus. So it does. So the thing is that it, the polio virus retains its original shape, but now the chemicals and enzymes and the nucleic acids can't really function like they used to. So they they often say when making a virus or use treating a virus to make a vaccine, they kill the virus, and this is what they mean by that. They're chemically treating it so that the virus can no longer, or sometimes they use heat as well. So the virus that cannot complete or cannot replicate again. So he used formaldehyde to do this to the virus. And what they do is take this inactivated virus, put it into a vaccine, 
And because it has its overall shape, and again, remember that antibodies need to recognize some sort of surface on an antigen. So you have all these antigens around in the structure of the polio virus. So the thing is that you want to, with the salt polio vaccine, you by injecting this virus that no longer can replicate due to ha being treated with formaldehyde, you hopefully generate antibodies that recognize the surface of this virus. Now this is, and the thing is that some of the po co coronavirus vaccines actually use this principle. So what these are are inactivated cor coronavirus vaccines. And what they, so things like the Sinopharm from made by China, and then you have the Sinovac by China, and I, I hope I'm not, I'm pronouncing this correct, Bharat Biotech from India. So they all use this, so this technology isn't new, and this is pretty like, it's, I mean, Jonas Salk was doing this, it's like around what, 50, 60, 70 years ago. So he was able to do this, like, this is old technology, this is something anyone can pretty much do. So this is why you don't need a lot of extensive resources to make an inactivated coronavirus vaccine. And so I think Sinopharm, as you can see, is like approved in China, some South Americans, some other countries as well. Sinovac, again, it's not, you probably might, you may not have heard of these because why? Well, they're not approved in the US and Western, many Western countries yet. Sinovac, I think, is a little more in South America. And Barat Biotech, not too much in the West as well. So again, if these are new vaccines to you, there's a reason why. So again, what do they do? So what you do is take the original coronavirus. And again, this is another thing. Everyone calls it COVID-19, right? Or just COVID. Well, COVID is the actual, yeah. So it's like, so the COVID vaccine is like, or so again, SARS-CoV-2 is the virus and COVID-19 is the condition caused, the respiratory condition caused by the SARS-CoV-2. So how do you make a corona, an activated coronavirus vaccine? Now, I, I mean, that's the other thing. I can't read Chinese and I don't know if they've actually published this from either of those um, Chinese biotech companies or the Indian biotech company. So, but this is how you would do it. it the, this is the best guess. So what you do is take the viruses, grow up in a cell culture, and take a lot of this virus, chemically process this. And again, I have trying what else is in there besides inactivated virus? Bit, I don't know, big question. And they probably wouldn't publish it too because they probably don't want other people making this sort of vaccine. And this is why if you look if you look at the statistics for the Chinese va the vaccines and the Indian vaccine, there's a big difference in the efficacy and I think it comes down to how are they inactivating this and what else are they including in the vaccine. So what are you trying to do? Well you're trying to kill kill the virus and inactivate it so it doesn't replicate in the person you're injecting into. So what you want to do is have a weakened version of the virus or an inactive version of the virus and then load up a vaccine with that virus and then introduce that to the body. So these shouldn't replicate if you do it correctly. And then you're, what you're doing to try to do is train your immune system to recognize all the proteins and structures of the antigens on the virus.